Hi guys, just a quick message to say I filmed this all as one video and then my iPhone app wouldn't let me upload it all because it was too large. So I had to split it up in two. So I'll post both parts on the same at the same time though. Bye! Hi guys, it's Emily and today I'm here to bring you the top tens tag. I was tagged in this a long time ago by Liz Schubert and this tag was created by Jason over at Chapter and Verse. And the way this works is you're supposed to talk about your 10 favorite books from least favorite to most favorite and then each book gets a point, uh, like a, a number of points and then Jason is putting them all in a spreadsheet sort of to see like which is the most favorite book of booktube and it, like I said it's been a while since Liz tagged me in the tag so I don't know if Jason is still doing this or not but I thought it'd be fun to show my top 10 books anyway so let's just get right into it. Top favorite book which would get one point on the scale is A Question of Attraction by David Nichols. This is also known as Starter for Ten, which is what I always refer to it as. And it, there's also a movie based on it that's called Starter for Ten, which stars um, James McAvoy as the main character. This book is about Brian. He's a working class boy. He grew up in sort of like rural England. And he comes to America. He comes to London to, or maybe it's Oxford actually. He comes to Oxford to be go to college and he gets um, on the team for Oxford for his favorite game show which is called University Challenge and it's about the friendships he develops with the team and how he sort of you know discovers himself and he has a relationship with a girl and named Alice and it's just a really lo lovely book. I really enjoyed the writing of this book and it's just so clever and funny and the movie is really clever and funny as well. So yeah I just really enjoyed this book and I highly recommend it. My ninth favorite book is Contested Will. Who Wrote Shakespeare by James Sapiro. This is a nonfiction book that sort of dives into the new um, theory that Shakespeare was actually a cover-up for a, another person, either Queen Elizabeth I or Francis Bacon or Christopher Marlowe or just somebody else that wanted um, to be anon anonymous and so thus took on the name of William Shakespeare and James Sapiro sort of goes through and refutes all these um, theories and shows how why Shakespeare is actually Shakespeare and of course there has been scholarship that shows that William Shakespeare might not have written all of his works but this is actually just still a really fascinating book and it goes step by step you know uh, rumor by rumor and shows you exactly why Shakespeare had to have written at least the majority of his own plays and yeah I just really found it interesting and the subject was really interesting and the writing style was very engaging and I highly recommend this if you have any interest at all in the concept of Shakespeare and the you know refuting of the possible other identities that you know might have had he might have had so yeah really enjoyed this book as well. My eighth favorite book receiving three points on the scale is On Writing, a memoir by A Memoir of the Craft by Stephen King. And this is a nonfiction book just detailing Stephen King's writing process and his, some of his history and how he got a start as a writer. And this is a really engaging ring. This was the first Stephen King book I ever read and so far I've only ever read um, 112363 of his works. So I'm but I really like both of the books that I've read by him so far. This is just a relatively short book and like I said, very engaging. You know, I found it very inspirational and I definitely want to read, read it someday when, especially if I ever get really serious about writing my own book. But yeah, really enjoyed this, highly recommend this. Really, really think Stephen King is a great writer. The seventh favorite book is The Peabody Sisters, Three Women Who Ignited American Romanticism by Meghan Marshall. This is about Elizabeth, Mary, and Sophia Peabody, who are three sisters that sort of grew up in rural Massachusetts and then eventually made their way to Boston and became very involved in the Transcendentalism movement. Elizabeth owned a bookstore that was very popular with the Transcendentalism set, and she was also um, a part of... Out um, 
what to say, Bronson Alcott's school, and she also participated in uh, Margaret Fuller's Conversations, which was a very important discussion group for women. And then Mary Hawthorne, or Hawthorne, Mary Peabody was very involved in education and develop the development of kindergartens, and later she married Horace Mann, who wrote uh, for newspapers, and they became very involved in the education movement. And then Sophia Peabody married Nathaniel Hawthorne, and she was a great artist, and again, she was very important in the trans transcendentalism movement. And I just really found the writing of this very accessible, and the women, all three of the women are very fascinating. This is one of those rare books that I read from the library, and then later out, later on I went and bought my own copy. So this was just a really engaging read, and I really enjoyed Megan Marshall's other nonfiction book that I read earlier in the year, Margaret Fuller. So yeah, I just think Meg Megan Marshall is an excellent nonfiction writer, and I just really enjoy learning more about the transcendentalism movement and about uh, amazing women as well. My seventh favorite book, receiving four points on the scale, was is The Bean Trees by Barbara Kingsolver. This is a really great book about a young woman named Taylor Greer, and she's sort of um, running away from her life and trying to find herself. And on her journey, she um, sort of picks up this Indian orphan named Turtle, and they become, they sort of band together and form a, a makeshift family, but then um, the Child Protective Services starts to follow them because Turtle's um, family has reported her as missing, and it's sort of about the challenges that they go through, and how, again, how they develop their own family, and then they eventually settle down and gain more members of their family, and it's just a really great book, and a really, really wonderful writing, and I also really enjoy the sequel, sequel to this book, which is Pigs in Heaven, and this is a book that I've been meaning to reread for a long time, which I can say for almost all of these other ones as well, but yeah, I just really, really love this book, and I highly recommend it if you're interested in um, family stories or, you know, two unlikely people becoming, you know, very close together, and yeah, it's just a really wonderful book.